join kids hat family tia did you take my school project yes tofu i took it to school with me how can you tia i worked on that project for 6 weeks I used all my pocket money to get the supplies for it. It wasn't yours to take. Tofu, can you please calm down? There is a reason that I took it. What could be a good reason to steal my project? Before I tell you that, I need to tell you something else. The other side of the wall. Once upon a time, a girl loved gardening. She had many beautiful flowering plants in her garden. One day, she went to the market and met a lady selling seeds. These are seeds of a beautiful flowering creeper plant. If you want to plant it near a wall, it will take a support of the wall and grow. Take these. Your garden will become even more beautiful. The girl bought the seeds and merrily came home. She planted them by the back wall of her garden. It was a wall that she shared with her neighbor her neighbor couldn't walk but they would often talk to each other from behind this wall i have planted seeds of a lovely new plant oh that's nice i wish i could someday come and see a beautiful garden but alas i cannot move my own garden has become a dry patch of land as i cannot take care of it Many months passed and the girl tended to her new creeper plant every day. And with each day, the plant became bigger and bigger, but it didn't flower. Not a single flower grew on it. Frustrated by the only plant that did not give her flowers, she decided to cut it down. She brought her axe and was about to chop the creeper down just then her neighbor called out is that you i have been meaning to talk to you for many weeks thank you so much for the lovely flowers flowers yes they are beautiful i feel so happy every time i see them the girl rushed to the neighbor's house she saw that the creeper from her garden had pushed through the cracks and holes in her wall and was growing on her neighbor's side of the wall and it was full of the most beautiful flowers she had ever seen in her life you didn't submit the project as your own did you tia you took it for a good cause yes i am glad that you have understood that I took it because the house on your project kept falling apart. I took it to the carpentry lab and got it fixed. I will get it back tomorrow. Oh dear, you are so nice and I was so horrible to you. I am sorry. It's okay, Tofu. Just remember that things may not always be what they seem like. Wasn't last night's slumber party fun tofu? Oh, I had a blast. Let's do it again.
I agree, but I noticed that you weren't being very nice to cousin Rob. You were always with your friend Josh. Cousin Rob started it. Started what? Josh is one of my best friends and cousin Rob told me that he didn't like Josh as much as I did. There's nothing wrong in that, Tofu. I don't understand. Why not? Shall I explain it to you with a story? Yes, I want to hear the story. A very long time ago, there lived a mighty lion in a jungle. One day, he went to the river to drink water. But his leg got stuck in the thick slushy mud of the river bank. No matter how much he tried, his leg wouldn't come out. He called out for help. But alas, there was none. And so he remained stuck in the mud. After a few days, a kind jackal came to the same spot of the river to drink water. He saw the lion stuck in the mud. Your Majesty, are you all right? No, jackal. I am stuck in the mud. I cannot move. I have been here for days now. Give me a moment, Your Majesty. Let me see what I can do. The jackal quickly crossed over to the riverside where the lion was stuck. With his paws, he dug out the mud where the lion's leg was caught. I think your leg should be free now. Please try and come out. The lion tried to move but he couldn't. His leg had become stiff after being in the same position for so many days. Seeing this, the jackal made more efforts to free the lion. He pushed him and pulled him till he finally came out of the mud. The lion was very happy to be able to move freely after so many days. Thank you, kind jackal. You have saved me. You are welcome, your majesty. Now, I must get back home. Where will you go? Why don't you come and stay with me? You've saved me and now you are my friend for life. The jackal accepted the lion's offer and both grew their own families. But they continued to live together and hunt together. Their children would even play together. But the lioness did not like the friendship between the jackal and the lion. And she conveyed the same to the lady jackal. The lioness told me that the lion does not want us to live here with him and his family. Hearing this, the jackal was very upset and went to see the lion. I thought we were friends, but if you did not want my family and me to live here with you, you should have told me so. Instead, 
you conveyed your message to me through the lioness and the lady jackal my friend i don't know what you are talking about we are leaving no my friend don't leave me and go i have not done anything of that sort i want you to stay with me the jackal understood what had happened i am sorry friend i understand your sincerity and love towards me i think i judged you too quickly it is not you who wants me gone but the lioness i shouldn't live here any longer no you don't have to go i will speak to the lioness no don't worry about it my family and i will live in another home but you and i will still remain friends it is best for both families though the lion was very sad he agreed and so the jackal made another home for himself and his family but his friendship with the lion remained they met every day went on hunts together and shared lives good and bad till the end of their lives the lioness didn't like the jackal even though the lion and he were best friends and she knew that the jackal had saved the lion once upon a time yeah That's why I'm telling you tofu sometimes you may like someone very much but your family may not feel the same way about them Oh I get it now Let's call cousin Rob and others for one more slumber party I promise I will behave better this time Is everything fine, Tofu? No. How can everything be fine? We were in the gym class when Josh and his friends came to me and started making fun of me. They made fun of you? Why? Because they all are taller and faster than me. Well, they should be. They're much older to you, Tofu. Everybody knows that but it was so embarrassing Tia What are you going to do now What can I do Hmm well let's get your mind off this nonsense I read something interesting in school today Should I tell you Hmm I guess One day a horse saw a snail in the meadow Look at you. You are so slow. Hmm. The snail did not like the way the horse spoke to him, but he decided to ignore his mean comments. But the horse went on and on. Where are you going? And when do you think you'll reach there? I don't understand why you need to make fun of me all the time. Well, look at yourself. It takes you so long to get from one place to another. I would run miles in that time. I suggest we both get on with our business and day. 
You know, I have an idea. Let's race. The snail thought about it for a moment. He had a plan. <laughs> okay, sure. Let's do that. How about this Sunday morning? Okay, we will race this Sunday. After the horse had left, the snail gathered all the other snails and told them what had happened. He also told them his plans. Everybody agreed and when Sunday came, they met very early in the morning. Okay everyone, spread out from the starting point of the race till the ending point. Everyone hide all along the race track. And so the snails spread out. When it was time for the race, the horse arrived. Soon the race started. The horse took off striding. After a while, he looked down and he was surprised to see the snail right in front of him. How did you get here? I must run faster. And so the horse started running. After some time he looked down and yet again saw a snail ahead of him. How is this possible? How can you be ahead of me? I will run even faster. The horse started running even faster. When he looked down again after some time, he saw the snail there again. This is impossible. I will run the fastest I can. Now the horse took off as fast as he could. As he neared the finishing line, he looked down, but he saw a snail crossing the finishing line. Tired and humbled, the horse gave up. I am so sorry. I underestimated you and made fun of you. Please forgive me for my arrogance. All the snails who had hidden along the race course and fooled the horse into believing that they were the same snail that he was racing heard this and laughed quietly from their hiding spots. What a wonderful story, Tia! Isn't it? I loved it too. And you know what, Tia? 
I know what to do about Josh and his friends. I'm feeling so much better. Oh really? What will you do? I won't get into a fight or get upset by what they say. I will just use my brains instead of muscles. Well, that sounds like a good idea to me, Tofu. Thanks, dear. I'm going to my friend's house to make a plan. Bye. Bye, Tofu. Look, that's a wolf out there. He looks so big and cunning. Yeah, Tofu, wolves are known to be clever and cunning. My childhood memories with wolves are quite interesting, especially the story of the wolf and the seven little goats. The wolf and the seven little goats? Wow, I haven't heard that one. Tell me the story, Tia. Once upon a time, there lived a mama goat and her seven little kids. Theirs was a happy little home. All the seven little kids used to play in the meadows, into the wild with the butterflies and birds singing along. Their days used to go in complete harmony and bliss. Until one day, a big black wolf noticed these little kids playing in the meadow. Ha ha ha! Such an easy treat they are for me. I haven't eaten since ages. I'm sure these would make delicious lamb chops for my dinner tonight. He waited for the moment when the mother goat would leave her kids alone patiently hiding in the bushes. Children, I'm going to the market to buy bread and cookies for you. I'll be back by evening. Just make sure you remain conscious of this big bad wolf. But mommy, how would we know if it's not you? The wretched wolf can easily be recognized with his hoarse voice and black feet. Don't open the door or else you little ones would get into danger. Don't worry, mummy. We would take care of ourselves. The mother goat went off to the market and the kids made doubly sure with the locks on the door. After making sure that they are safe in their little home, off they went to play when suddenly there was a knock on the door. Hello, my children. Open the door. Your mother is back. Hearing the voice, the youngest one scampered to the door. Mummy, mummy, she's back. In no time, the eldest one ran to catch the his little sibling. No, it's not our mummy. She hasn't got such a rough voice. Go away, you big bad wolf. Our mother doesn't have such a hoarse voice. Hearing this, the wolf got annoyed and ran to get a box of chalk. As he had heard, that this would make his voice as soft as that of a baby. But kids, you shouldn't do this at any cost as this would only make your tummy ache badly. So off he went and cut off the whole box of chalk. Knocking on the door again, he said, Hello kids, your mother is back. Look what I have got for you. Cookies, breads and ginger ale. Oh, that sounds like a mother. 
Should we open the door now? But look down there. A mother has not got black feet. This is surely the wolf. Go away, you big bad wolf. A mother has not got black feet, but beautiful white feet. Hearing this, the wolf ran to the miller and jumped into the mountain of white dough. He was all white from head to toe. Running back to the house, he knocked again and said, Kids, your mother is back. Open the dough. That sounds like a mother and also the feet are white. We should open the door now. Not knowing what danger awaits them, all the kids ran to the door and opened it. But just to see who was standing there. The big bad wolf gave a loud laugh and brushed off his white powder. Hello kids, are you ready to become my feast tonight? The kids ran here and there to save their lives. One went inside the kettle, the other in the oven. One looked for a place under the bed and the other tried saving itself by hiding in the pot. The youngest one was so tiny that he managed to hide himself inside the clock case. The wolf, having no mercy, started taking them out from their hidings. One by one, he rolled them in a ball and gulped them up. Ah, there goes the first one. Oh, the second one is under the bed. Here you go. In no time, he ate all the kids except for the youngest one who was hiding in the clock case. With his tummy full, he burped and left the home. When the mother returned, she was shocked to see the door open and waited for the biggest nightmare that might have come true. The house was all upside down. The crockery was broken. The curtains were torn. The chair was broken. And the kids were nowhere to be found. She cried for them. <laughs> children! Oh children! Where are you? At that very moment, the youngest one came out of the clock case and hugged his mother crying and howling. Oh mother! The bad wolf disguised us by sounding and looking like you. He ate up all my brothers and sisters. What will we do now? Don't worry. Let's go and look for him. They went out searching for the wolf. His tummy was so filled that he slept off in a meadow near the house itself. His snores were so loud that even the branches of the tree were shuddering. The mother goat very quietly went near him and asked her youngest kid to get scissors, thread and a needle. Off he went to get them. The mother goat very quietly slit open his tummy and took out all her kids from his tummy. They then filled up his tummy with stones as big as balls and then she stitched the tummy with the thread and the needle. The wolf had such a huge feast after so long and he slept all night. In the morning when he got up, he was so thirsty that he tried running to the well. But his belly was so heavy that he could hardly walk. He picked up his belly and managed to reach the well. But the moment he bent down to drink water, he couldn't handle the weight and fell in the well. The kids were looking at all of this from their window. 
and shouted happily, Mommy, Mommy, the wolf has died. Now we can play freely outside without any fear. And they lived happily ever after. Now that was one cunning wolf. But Tofu, if you be bad to others, bad happens to you too. Always remember that. Ya Tia. We have come too far from our camp. When will we go back? I am feeling hungry. It will take some time, Tofu. Those berries look yum. I think I can treat on them for the time being. Tofu, stop! Do you even know what those berries are about? They look yum to me. That is all I know. But they can be poisonous. You are in the middle of a jungle. Poisonous? Come, let me tell you a story on our way back to the camp. On a long sunny day, there was a fox walking in a desert. Hungry and thirsty, all that he could see was miles of sand and barren rocks. Oh, it is so hot. I need water badly. He kept on walking and suddenly he saw a well. Thank God. I finally found a well. Now I will no longer be thirsty. He ran and ran in great excitement. The moment he leaped on the well's wall to check water, he lost his balance and fell in the well. Help! Help! Somebody, please help me! This well is really deep. How would I ever get out of this place? Nearby, a goat was passing the well. When she heard the fox, she went to peep over the well. Hey fox! What are you doing inside this well? Oh goat, isn't it too hot outside? I just came into this well to cool myself off. Why don't you also hop in and enjoy this cool and refreshing water? Not even thinking for a second, the goat jumped into the well. Hey fox! You were right! This water is actually very refreshing. I could spend all my day out here. After some time, the goat stops and asks the fox, Wait a second! How in the world will we manage to get out of this well? Oh, it's going to be simple. If you stand on your two feet and push me up, I can manage to reach to the top of the well and then pop out of the well. The goat, once again, without thinking twice, does as the fox said. Hey fox! What about me? How would I get out? Ha 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 ha! I guess you have to think about it on your own. B but I helped you getting out of the well. Who asked you to? You should have thought about the consequences before taking any actions.
So one should look before one leaps. Yeah, Tofu, always. Because you never know what danger you might get into. And those wild berries, they might have been harmful for you. Uh, yeah, dear. One should always check before taking a step further. Look, there is our camp and I can already smell the dinner is ready. Yay! Let's go! For your favourite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.